It's the human cry of intense suffering. And here's where I feel entirely inadequate. It was aggregated, uh, aggravated by the anguish of his innocent and holy life. That awful and agonizing cry of the loneliness of his passion. May I put it like this? He was alone with the sins of the world on that cross. And I mean alone. No man could be with him, forsaken of God. And yet at that moment, there is the paradox, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. A rift came in the Godhead when he became sin for us. And then there is a word here we may pass over. Why art thou so far from the words of my roaring? Have you ever noticed that his, at his trial he was silent? But on the cross, the roaring is the roaring of a lion. That's the thought that is here. At his trial, he is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, he open not his mouth. But remember that the one who's the Lamb is also the Lion of the tribe of David. And there upon the cross, he roared like a lion. The cry was like the cry of a wounded animal, not human. If you've ever hunted in the woods or ever been in the woods at night and one animal attacks another animal and you hear that cry, that awful shriek, that's what we have here. That was a plaintive shriek and wail of unutterable woe. And no gospel writer records this at all. After all, what would you say? How would you record it? Only he could say it. Why are you so far from my roaring? Cry of a wounded animal. I move on down. It's interesting in this psalm how many references to the animal world and also to this, this world beneath us. Verse 6 says, But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of man, and despised of the people. He says here that he's a worm. There are those that don't like that. Well, that's what he said, and we have to leave it like that. The wonderful passage that goes with this in the Old Testament, and there are actually are two, uh, Genesis 22 and Isaiah 53 goes with Psalm 22. And in Isaiah 53, it says he's despised and rejected of man, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. May I say to you that he says, I'm a worm and no man. I'm a reproach of man. He's despised and rejected of man. Now that took place on the cross because I think his crucifixion was horrible. I think the mantle and night went down on that cross and in those last three hours when finally the light did break upon the cross that it, it was the most repulsive thing you've ever seen because he'd paid the penalty for your sin and my sin. The word worm here is a reference to the cocos, and the, the Israel used this cocos uh, to get the red dye that they used in all the tabernacle of furnish, uh, the, the furnishings that are there, the curtains and the coverings. Red predominated. And uh, this is the red that speaks, if you please, of the blood that he shed. I'm a worm. I'm now just giving. This is the one who gave the invitation, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. 
Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, the cocos worm, they shall be as snow. Nothing but the blood of Christ can take out your sin and my sin. That guilt complex that the psychologist at USC said to me, he said, McGee, you can emphasize that guilt complex because that guilt complex is as much a part of you as your right arm, and you can't lose it. Any more than you can lose your right arm, you can't shed it. You got it. And the only thing that can remove the guilt of sin from the human heart is the blood of Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, keeps on cleansing us from all sin. Now, will you notice, as we move on, the victim now begins to take notice of the brutal mob and the hardened spectators beneath the cross. And now we are seeing these seven last sayings from his viewpoint, why he said it and how he said it. Will you listen? Verse 7, All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. This is the crowd beneath the cross. May I say the intense hatred and bitterness of these men is without doubt one of the most alarming things in the Word of God. There have been criminals that have been so detested by the mob that they were taken from prison and lynched. England has many stories. But while the victim was being put to death, the mob, they dispersed. Tempest cooled and emotions were assuaged. Wasn't that way when Jesus died? You see the venom and the vileness of the human heart poured out as an open sewer, like the deadly fangs of a poisonous snake. And even when a snake puts his fangs in a victim, he slithers away in the grass. But not this crowd. They sat down and watched him die. You don't go any lower than that. There's nothing in Skid Row, there's nothing in the cesspools of the world today that's as low as that. And in that crowd, I believe, was Saul of Tarsus. That's the reason he said, I'm the chief of sinners. He knew he was. And he's not making an idle statement when he makes that. He's saying that which is true. He sat down with the other Pharisees and looked up there, shot out the lip and ridiculed him. And it was at this time that he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And if he hadn't said that, they would have committed the unpardonable sin. They put the Son of God to death. And that's the reason Paul kept talking about the grace of God that reached down and saved. Because he'd gone the limit. And later on, he could look up and say, the one who said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do is the one that I can look back now at him and say, he loved me and he gave himself for me. Now, he not only beholds the eyes of hate, he now looks down and sees the eyes of love. Listen to him. He sees his mother. John says, there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother. Listen now. Go up with him on the cross and look down at her. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. And what did he say? Woman. Behold thy son. You are the one that bore me. You are the one that brought me into the world. My humanity. Woman, behold thy son. 
She was told a soul it will pierce through your heart. It's going through a heart when he hung on the cross. She said it to wedding. <laughs> they have no wine. He says, what's that to us, woman? That's a term of endearment. What's that to us? means nothing to us. My hour has not yet come. Woman, behold thy son. My hour has come. For this purpose came I into the world. My hour has come. He's dying on the cross for the sins of the world. And then will you notice here, as we move 